Hi, so this uh, setup tutorial video is for this particular clock. Um, it's got some unique issues with it, so therefore we're doing one specifically for this clock. This is a German-made Normandy chime or Bim Bam chime type clock, which strikes on the hour and the half hour. So this clock, the reason why we're doing a, a, a video just for this particular clock is, is because the issue with setting it up is a little different. And there's, uh, we wanted to show that we were looking for a new glass, but unfortunately we couldn't find a glass to replace the one that's there. We did, however, find some new hands for it. Um, so we were able to put hands on it that are um, more compatible with the actual style of the clock. Um, so, so the big issue with this clock is uh, setting it up properly. And the reason why uh, there's a little, bit, a little bit different on this one is because the case has warped a little bit over time. And so we're going to talk about hanging it on the wall and getting it set up so that it's going to run properly for you. So you're going to see that the clock um, has no pendulum on it right now, and that's for shipping purposes. We take the pendulum off of it. With this clock, you have to set it up um, absolutely flush on the wall, so the clock should not be leaning forward on the wall at all. And to achieve that, what you want to do is you want to use a screw like this, which has a pan head type of screw that's going to hold the hanger to the wall so it doesn't allow it to slip forward and so you can see with this clock we have it absolutely tight to the wall so it does not slide forward at all on the wall the unique thing about this clock is that in order to level it you have to level it up the side as opposed to across the bottom and again that's because of the fact that the case has warped a little bit over time so when you hang it on the wall and get it nice and tight to the wall, flush to the wall. Then you're going to put a level up the left hand side and make sure that the bubble in the level is in the, is in the middle. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lock it in place so it doesn't slide around. And the way that you do that is by simply making sure that it's level and then putting some sort of a little uh, keeper on the wall. I've used a screw here, but you can use whatever, I mean a little nail or something like that, just to keep the clock from moving once you've got it le leveled and set up. Um, you don't want the clock moving around and having to reset it every time that you open the door to set the time or to wind the clock. So that's that's the the unique part about this clock is getting it set up properly so that it's going to tick properly and run properly. So without the pendulum on it, of course, it's going to be running really quickly. So the first thing we're going to do once we do have the clock up and leveled, locked in place, we're going to hang the pendulum on it. So hanging the pendulum on it is very carefully hook the pendulum to the reverted T up inside and I think we can maybe get a shot of it there with the camera just so you can see exactly where it hangs and then once it's hung on there you just give it a very gentle little start to get the clock running and you should be able to hear it ticking at this point it should be ticking without any extra noises no rubbing sounds and it should be also ticking nice and evenly so nice even tick 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 if you set it up and the clock is not ticking evenly, then you've got to check your level and make sure that the clock is hanging flush again so it's not moving around. Okay? And really, really important that you have it locked in place um, before you even try to do anything else with the clock. Uh, make sure that it is ticking evenly. So once you're happy with the way the clock is running and it's set up, the next step, of course, is going to be to wind and set the clock. Uh, winding it should be done on this clock once a week at the very minimum. Um, you can wind it as often as you like, but uh, no less than once a week. Now, the other thing I found with this clock is the key that you supplied with it um, only fits one side. So I've got another key here that we're going to use to fit that'll fit on both sides. This is the key that you supplied, and this is the key that we have that's going to go with the clock. So winding the clock is uh, very critical to make sure that it runs properly. The clock needs to be wound fully every time you wind it up. In other words, there's no such thing as overwinding it. There's no such thing as winding it too tight. You need to actually wind it until, until it, the uh, spring comes to a complete stop on both sides. And both sides need to be wound up for the clock to run properly. If you only wind one side, then the clock will stop when it tries to strike. So you can see how I wound it up until it comes to an absolute rebound. Again, there's no such thing as overwinding it. No such thing as winding it too tight.
but you can see it comes to a stop again once again okay once the clock is fully wound then you set it on the right time make sure that you have an accurate timekeeper of some sort with you when you're setting it up with this clock you can turn the hands backwards inside of the half hours so inside the six and the twelve as i just did there if it's a few minutes fast you just you could back it up a few minutes if the clock is slow you can run it ahead a few couple of minutes to set it on time absolutely critical that you set it every time you wind it because of the accuracy on a clock like this which is generally about a minute or so a day either plus or minus the clock will not be as accurate as other clocks that you have in the house other battery operated clocks so make sure that, the, that you do rewind it again accuracy of a minute a day is quite acceptable on a clock like this which means that over the course of a week it may be out five to seven minutes so it's not unusual to have to reset it Part of what we did when we service the clock is regulate it, make sure that it keeps proper time. Of course, that's why we test them, is to make sure that they're running properly and keeping good time. So this clock has been tested for at least a week, probably a little bit more than that with this one. Um, and so we found that it's been running really well and you should get the same results. The only thing you need to know as far as regulating it is concerned is that if it's outside of the parameters of minute a day, then we should know about it because it should be it should be well inside that when we do the work on it. Um, but regulating is done by means of the small nut on the bottom of the pendulum. And the reason why you need to know about that is because this, if this gets turned in shipping somehow or gets moved in shipping, then you need to know how this works. So to make the clock run faster, you're going to turn that nut to the right to raise the pendulum bob. And to make the clock run slower, you turn it to the left to lower it. So lower left, and that's how you, that's how, lower left is slower, basically, and that's how you can remember how to do it. Lower is slower, okay? And so um, running it, setting it up is pretty straightforward. If you're setting the time on it uh, over a longer period of time, like, for example, if it was, say, 3 o'clock and you wanted to set it now, what I usually do is try to take the hand in the strongest part and then let it strike every half hour Notice the chimes are a little unusual on this clock. That's because the chime rods have been changed. They're not the original, the original rods that the hammers are hitting on. So it sounds a little unusual. But this is basically how you'd set it over a longer period of time. You can see that I'm using the actual nut in the center, the, the little um, wire or the pin in the center to turn the hand. That's probably the safest way. So we're going to say that it's 10 minutes past three. Of course, if you have any questions at all when uh, you're setting the clock up or running it, uh, then we're always available by telephone or by email if you need to contact us. Our telephone number is 705-325-1455.